Hello everybody. Um, I'm going to do a Valentine jumper. I've seen them all over Pinterest. So I've never done this before, so I thought I'd talk you through it. So what I've bought is a cheap jumper from Primark, two, uh, six pounds, bargain. Just because obviously you're going to be wearing it. Well, I say you're only wearing it, you can wear it whenever you like, but it's Valentine's um, craft. And I've also bought some of this magic paper by DMC. I've never ever tried it, but from what I understand, you draw your design and then you stick it on, stitch, and then it if you wet it, it melts away. So we're gonna give that a whirl, see if it works. Thread wise, I've picked out two. These are from the charity shop, 50 pence each, and they're variegated, so I thought they'd be really pretty. I think we might go for the for the red. Um, other supplies I've got is a pen, which is a heat reusable pen. Fix no, it's a Uniball Signo heat erase pen. I get these from Amazon. Pack of five for about three quid. Does take a few days to come, but these are great. Some embroidery scissors, needle of choice. So I'm going for the Chenille size 22. These are my favourite. Not too big, not too thin. Um, but you can see the whole well and if you know me you know i don't wear my glasses so that's that right so here's my plan so i'm going to unfold it it does need ironing i've never i've not worn it it's fresh so i think if you were using an older jumper you might want to make sure it's washed and ironed um i'm going to give these a go so they're recommending Cotton Perle or a non, uh, hmm, Moulin Special. I can't pronounce that, so please forgive me. Um, what it's, So here's the instructions. So we're going to draw a design, cut it out, stick. That's my uh, weight <laughs> for the phone. Stick, stitch, and then dissolve paper with water. So let's give this a go. And if it doesn't go right, I've only wasted six pounds on on this jumper and 50p on thread. Right. Also you get two sheets. Now I will say this was about five ninety nine or four ninety nine just for two sheets of A5. I don't think it's worth it. But for the sake of trying. Now then, I want to put my word in here. So I'm gonna need to trace the collar, I think. Just so I know where I'm at as such. Obviously we won't waste that because we'll cut it off and we'll be able to use it on another project. There's my weight again. Hopefully, we can still see what I'm doing. So the Pinterest I've been seeing, I will link, um, if I can find the pin underneath, is they've got words written here, lots of different things, but I'm thinking I want to write, your love is my love. So that's um, the words from mine and my wife's wedding song we dance to Whitney Houston your love is my love so I'm gonna go for it and hope for the best okay cute cute um I'm gonna Use some scissors. Let me get some bigger ones. And chop that along the line. All right. And then chop again. I don't think we need all of that, do we? Mm. 
Okay. So let's move those out of the way and go for it. So I think if we pop it, oh yeah, that'll look quite sweet, I think. Right, so we're gonna, okay, so that's dried quite nicely on that paper as well. I was worried for a little bit, it wouldn't. Right, we're gonna unstick and then stick it down placement wise. I'm thinking here. Now obviously this is supposed to dissolve so you won't see any of that but my thought process of buying that was it will give it a little bit of stability although this is quite a thick jumper I do worry with um, sewing on two like garments it wouldn't wouldn't sit correctly so i'm going to just take this off so by the by the way in case you're wondering this is a clark clark's anchor 1203 fast color <laughs> my 50p bargain and we're gonna take and i'm probably hurting everybody by peeling it this way but i am not a professional like my mum i'm just going for it so we're going to take a little bit off and chop and i think we're going to go with three strands so i don't as it's a beginner friendly i thought i'd just let you know if, if you're not aware about your um embroidery threads they come in six strands and when a project calls for say two three you just pull um pull them apart so I'm going to go and try and find the way the weave hits because it will go a bit peaked on for me because it always does so that looks as though that's two these two are not having a good time oh I hope you can't hear my tummy rumbling it's one o'clock and I've decided to film this instead of having lunch Mm, no, right, we'll get a needle, okay, so we've got, mm, I'm not sure I'm liking that, but there we go, right, so we've got some strands, we're going to move that because I've ruined it, okay, let's get our needle. I have got a needle threader somewhere to help me because I am a little bit blind. And we're gonna thread the needle. And pull it through. Now we're gonna move, move that. Give it a little knot. Also, don't judge me for my knotting skills. And I've been taught by my mum, our friend Tracy, how to knot better. But for some reason, this is the way that my brain needs to do it. So this is the way that I will always do it. Okay. For this, I'm just going to use a very simple chain stitch. And I'm going to check that you can still see what I'm doing. I like to stitch in the hand. Sometimes I hoop up, sometimes I don't. It depends on what mood I'm in. But we're going to stitch in the hand. So I'm first of all going to bring it up through the top. My design. Pull it through. Now... I know that there are many pe ways that people like to do a stem, stem stitch, but this is the way I do it. So I hold it a little bit taut, can you see? Pop it through where I'm thinking that's gonna go. Pull through, and while it's in my thumb, nice and secure, I then go back up in the middle or so, making sure that I'm here and then I pull it through. So again, I go down, keep it in my thumb, 
pull it through now i've got a big loopy loop and then for this one i will try my very best to get it as close to the previous stitch as i can and pull it all through and then we're just going to repeat that all the way through so again hold it just so i know that i'm not going to get it And then I'll bring it up. As close to the previous stitch as I can. And back through again. So if I can, I'll bring it a bit closer. So we're going to go down. Sure we don't get that in the way. You have to excuse the jars. I've got a little lazy Susan with all jam jars and cute things on. Then back up to the top. And what I'm going to do is follow that. down along the writing that I've done until I've finished. So obviously we're going to need to go back. So I'm going to go back. This is probably not the way you're supposed to do it, but it is the way that my little brain works. And I imagine it's just like brush lettering and you need to follow your strokes. <laughs> Not that I can do that very well either, but you know. Probably gonna Hoping I'm still in camera. Again, I, you can hoop this up. The only reason why I don't is just I quite like a bit of hand stitching in the hand. Sorry, stitching the hand. And I'm also not too careful with my stitches. So I know that um, we went to a little event not too long ago. And there was a lovely lady who said that she had just begun and she wanted something really flat. She didn't want anything too big, like a design to do. I did want to just sort of say, I had never embroidered. I say never. I'd obviously done bits and bobs here and there um, at school and whatnot. I'd never embroidered as, as densely as I had until I made the original Moonlight Hair with my mum on her first workshop. And at the time I was running a pub and I attended as a, just as a body filler, you know, my mum's really nervous. It was the first time she was holding her own workshop, things like that. And I was gobsmacked, one, how quickly I picked it up and actually how easy it is to do. And as somebody who was in a, who was in, a, in an extremely stressful job so for those that didn't know before I worked with my mum here at the Moonlight Stitches I did run well I was an assistant manager at a pub um hospitality has to be one of the hardest jobs that and retail I don't wow if you've never I think that everybody should do a year in one of those trades to and they would understand how stressful that that position can be anyway my point being is I stitched the moonlight hair and it completely relaxed me what I did was I, I used to I got on the sofa with my wife she was playing on her uh, playstation 
and I sat and just enjoyed the art of slow stitch and I actually began to forget all my stresses, staff, rotors, did I do the beer order, had I ordered enough for this event, is there a football game on this weekend, you know, usual things. So definitely don't think that you have to be the best at embroidering embroidering should I say you know we all learn and nobody's perfect everybody can learn you know there's that saying you can teach an old dog new tricks or is it so you can't teach an old dog new tricks either way I think you can um and it's never too late to try a new skill I personally think that anyway I also happened to meet a wonderful, wonderful group of ladies um, on the workshop who now have fast become friends. We, we, we went to Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show together. There's lots of things. We also often meet for coffee. Well, they all drink coffee. I drink like, <laughs> I don't need any um, caffeine. We also share ideas, things like that. I'm really hoping I'm in camera, so if I'm not, please forgive me. I am not the uh, the YouTuber that my mum is. Um, she. She has a full rig. I am filming on my phone with a small camera setup attached to my desk. What I did want to ask is, what, so we um, obviously come up with as many ideas as we possibly can for content, things like that. Would you be interested in things like craft room tours? So I, by by heart, it, I, I began crafting uh, as a paper crafter. So I do have a craft room here at my house um, in Mansfield. So obviously I don't live with my mum, I live with my wife at home. Um, I, I did post earlier the office junior Charlie he is my cat but I obviously have a studio here mum has her studio there would you like to see tours of our studios and our uh, craft room mine's very bright mum's is very eclectic I like to think they were quite quite unique as well in the um, design aspect of things so I have used a lot of vintage furniture pieces mixed in with some store-bought items. So I, I have got a IKEA desk and some shelves from B&M. However, the majority of my supplies are stored in Welsh dresses, things like that, which have been repurposed. One's bright yellow, one's pink with like a 70s background in it. Is that something you guys would be interested in looking at? Also, what tutorials and things like that would you like to see? So I know we've really been enjoying the slow stitch alongs with me. Something really nice to to um, wind you down at the end of the day. Would you like to see some more beginner friendlies? Would you... Do you enjoy seeing small DIYs, there's a lot of things that we do make that aren't just our workshops, um, so they're not the bigger animals, there are things like we did the, obviously you saw the 12 days of Tremus, the bunting that my mum did over Christmas, if you haven't seen that, absolutely go back and watch that, you can always start Christmas crafts, especially if you're gifting that could also be turned into, you know, a spring craft. You could ch change the 
the trees the trees into something like Easter eggs is that something you'd like to see would you like to see um, seasonal decor hmm so we are gonna have to I think what I will do is go back and conch them in couch not conch that's a shell <laughs> couch them down just slightly so you can see the O a bit more but what we can see is it it's coming together also realize I am a waffler <laughs> it's ever so strange talking to a camera I don't think you'll ever know until you are the one doing it I painted my nails specifically for this video as well I meant to film it few days ago but I chipped my nails we've been decorating our bedroom and I keep chipping them so I've just done these so please forgive me I do do them myself I've gone for a little bit of a valentine's theme I have a little gel, gel kit so it's a little bit of self-care for me um which I don't often get round to Right, we're gonna go here. I'm not very sure that we know. Oh. I've pulled that through too soon. You see, now I'm struggling because I can't see where to pull it through. Okay. So what I am going to do is just going to go back and couch that O down. And this is the thing as well, I know a lot of people really panic. I am a big believer in handmade, it's always so much prettier and so desirable. You know, and mistakes are to be made. You don't go through life being perfect. Okay, so as you can see, I've just, I don't think you can tell, I've just gone through and stitched that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie it off and I'm going to go along and chain stitch the rest. And I'll come back because I have got a little idea for the, uh, for the sleeve and before and we'll We'll see how it all comes through. Okay, I'm back. So as you can see, I have chain stitched. And again, like I said, it's pretty beginner friendly, so it doesn't really matter. My mum always says, you know, somebody will find it beautiful no matter what you do. So I've done that. I have added a little French knot as the, as the dot on the eye. And I'm really loving the variegated threads I've used now. That looks really pretty. But I don't think we're finished. So I wanted to do some detail on the arm. And I feel like I want to do a small heart and a H. So my wife's name is Hope. My name is also Heather. So I don't need more than one. But I'm just thinking a, a H and a little heart. So we're going to grab that scrap from earlier. And I'm just going to wing this. And I'm going to draw... A simple H and a heart. Okay, so I'm going to chop that out. I think I'll do it on 
the uh you have to forgive me i want to say this is my right sleeve i am dyslexic so sometimes i really struggle with my left and right but just here how sweet would that be so if i take this off oh, at least give it a go oh, come on thing about having short nails sometimes i get really excited and put um put false nails on and it never works out well they always come off within about the day because you just can't stay with them right so we're going to pop that there now i may hoop that just because i'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it without help. So let's see if I can. This is just a hoop I've got, to be honest with you. I just, I, I, um, <laughs> I like to take a lot of my, my bits and bobs from my mother's <laughs> craft room. I call it the Moonlight Haberdashery. Is it going to be? Try and open it just a little bit more. I think this is going to be a bit harder to sew than I anticipated. Now I'm going to give it a go, but that's it now. I've, I've made the commitment, we're going for it. I'm really sorry about the uh, jars. I need to maybe think about, about something a bit more. I don't think I'm going to need to tighten that up, to be honest. Right. I have got what's left of my threads. So we'll pull that through and not the end. Can we still see what I'm doing? Probably not. So this is going to... I think I made the right decision on hooping this because I think it's going to just help with the keeping it stable. I'm going to do again a little chain stitch
and we have a cute little Valentine's. So we're gonna say I, I we, I'm gonna go and wet this down, see if it dissolves and I'll be back shortly. Dokey. So I've finished, I've rinsed it all off. It's now air dried overnight. I don't like to put them into the tumble dryer. So it's turned out really well. There's no residue, no ring around where the sticky's been. So I'd definitely be use, using it again. Um, I would say the thread has dried quite hard, although that doesn't matter, I'm sure. In a wash, that will cheer up. And then I've also used a pick and stitch by the Tattooed Embroider, I think her name was, and made my wife a little spooky but cute ghosty Valentine's t-shirt as well. Uh, that's it from me today. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe and like. It really does help us out. And make sure you comment below anything you'd like to see from us in future. Do you want to see more uh, beginner friendly? Any more like little DIYs like this? Like I said before, we uh, we do a lot of decor type things like bunting stuff like that. So let us know. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye.